Hello and welcome back to the Basics of Ryzen UV series. My name is John Dickinson and in this tutorial we're going to be covering packing. So let's get started by choosing Files, Load with UVs and Forward Controls.fbx. And the first thing I want to talk to you about is Map Resolution or Map Res. And this is the resolution of the UV tile. So currently this is set to 2K or 2048 and that gives us a margin of 8 and padding of 16. Now, for those of you who don't know, the margin is this space around the UV tile, and the padding is the minimum space between UV islands. So currently, the margin is half the padding. Now, when you're working in Ryzen UV, your map res should match the resolution that you plan to texture your model. And I work in 4K most of the time, so I'm going to multiply this by 2 just by typing in asterisk 2 and hitting enter. And that's now 4K. Now nothing appeared to happen down here, but notice the margin is now 16 and the padding is now 32. And importantly, the texel density of all of the UV islands has doubled. And how do we know that? Well, we can easily see it by sampling the texel density. So let's hit F4 to go into island mode and select one of the islands and just click the Pick Texel Density eyedropper. So the texel density for that island is 322.64. Just deselect, and let's go back to 2048, just by dividing by 2, and do the same thing. Select and sample. Now the texel density is 161.32, so it's half what it was at 4K. And we're going to be covering more about texel density in a future tutorial. But for now, just be aware that you need to be working at the map res that you plan to texture. And also that when you change the map res, it also changes the texel density, as well as the margin and the padding. Okay, let's just maximize the UV view by hitting E. And what we're going to talk about now is this option down here, Distribute. And currently, Distribute is in the UDIMS panel. But in a future version, you'll find it in the Packing Properties panel where it's more suited. Okay, so let's just select some islands. Just drag a marquee around a few islands. Doesn't matter how many. Hold down Tab and just drag them out of the UV tile. Notice also that my initial orientation is set to vertical and optimizations is off. Let's hit P to pack. And notice that all of the islands, including those outside the tile, are distributed onto the UV tile. All right, let's undo. And this time, we'll deselect and we'll uncheck distribute. We'll get a message, just going to click OK, and pack again. Ah, so now the islands outside the UV tile are ignored, and the islands that were inside the UV tile are distributed to fill the space. So now let's just select a couple of the islands outside. And if we pack again, this time, even if an island is outside the tile and distribute is turned off, if it's selected, it does get packed. So the key thing to remember here is that what gets packed depends on what's selected and also whether distribute is on or off. So let's reactivate distribute and pack once again. And because we have vertical as initial orientation, everything gets packed vertically. Let's change that to horizontal and pack again. And you may recognize these options from the previous tutorials. Okay, so now they're packed horizontally. But what if we want some islands to be vertical and some to be horizontal? Well, for the ones that we want to be vertical, we can give them a custom orientation. So let's just select this one and this one. And come up and choose initial orientation, vertical. And notice how they both now display OV, so orientation vertical. And also notice up here in Packing Properties that it says we have two islands selected. Let's also give an island a custom orientation. So we'll grab this one here, hit F2, and just double click to select that edge loop. And in the Align panel, just click Align Island Horizontally. F4 for Island Mode, that's still selected. And let's set its initial orientation to Off. Okay, so Orientation Off. Okay, so deselect, and now when we pack, our two vertical islands are packed vertically, and the island with initial orientation off 
has maintained its custom orientation. Okay, so let's just select all of these islands again. And we can reset their custom orientation just by clicking on the X. Now, if you've watched the previous tutorial in this Ryzen UV Basic series, you may remember that the other way of maintaining the orientation of all islands without custom orientations is to pack translate, this option up here. And the shortcut for that is Shift P. So hitting Shift P, and you can see that our vertical islands are still vertical, and our custom orientation is still aligned as we expect. And notice down here that the amount of space used on the UV tile is 59%. So let's talk about optimizing the packing. I'm going to switch this back to vertical and pack again. And now it's at 52%. So to give Ryzen UV the best possible chance of using as much space on this tile as possible, we use the optimizations option. And by default, it's set to off. Let's choose this option here, 90. So this is a step angle of 90. So this is going to tell Ryzen to pack everything vertically, but if something is more optimal being packed at 90 degrees of vertical, so horizontal, then pack it horizontally. Watch what happens to this figure down here if we hit P. Ah, so now it's 59%. So we've given Ryzen UV the best possible chance of packing these islands in the most optimal way using the most space on the UV tile. And since I learned about optimizations, I'm finding I leave this option on all the time. Okay, so that's the basics of orientation. So now let's take a look at scale. And to do that, we're going to open up a different file by choosing Files, Load with UVs, and choosing this one here, Plane 10 by 10. Now, this is a 10 by 10 plane, and it's been cut into individual UV islands. And the reason we're using this is because it's going to make scaling a little easier to understand. Let's just select two of these islands and hit I to isolate. And we'll just pack them by hitting P. And of course, by default, that's made the islands as big as they can be to fit into the UV tile. And the reason that's happening is because this option here, max scaling, is set to full. Let's select the top island, hold down tab, and scale that down. Now select both. Hold down tab and just move them outside the UV tile. Okay, so now we have two different texel densities. And up here, initial scale, by default, is set to keep average texel density. Let's set both minimum scaling to off and maximum scaling to off. And when we pack this time, the islands have scaled to the average size of both islands. And because we set scale optimization range to off, they're no longer scaled to their maximum size to fill the UV tile. Okay, so let's select both islands again. Tab, and we'll scale them down. And actually, we'll take this one and just move it outside. And we'll make it even smaller. Something like that. All right, now this time, we're going to set initial scale to this option here, follow. So this is going to follow the average texel density. And now we select the island outside the tile, P to pack. And now that island follows the average texel density of this island that's already packed. And because this is average texel density, let's try it again with three islands. So we'll just hit I. And let's see, let's select that one and that one and just one more. I again. Just do a little bit of scaling. We'll just scale this one right down. And just gonna move it out of the way. Scale this one up. And we'll take this one and we'll make it really small and place it outside. Okay, so now we have three different texel densities. So with that one still selected, let's press P again. And now that island's been packed using the average texel density between the two islands that are already packed. Okay, now the next option is match specified texel density. So let's select that. And we'll select this island again and just pick its texel density. Deselect by hitting backspace and P to pack. And now all of the islands are the same because the islands that were deselected 
are now matching the texel density of the island that was selected. Okay, so now let's take a look a little closer at this scale optimization range. And this can be a little confusing, but I'm about to make it really simple for you. So this is the optimization that happens after the islands have been scaled in order for Ryzen to use the space on the UV tile in the most optimal way. Now, we set this to off and off a moment ago because I wanted to demonstrate the initial scale options without optimization. Let's switch this back to average and pack again. And because we have scale optimization range set to off and off, they don't fill the space. So now let's set max scaling to full again. And pack. And as you'd expect, the islands are scaled using the average scale and then optimized to their maximum size in the tile. Okay, so now let's just grab all three, move them outside the UV tile, give ourselves a little more space, and we're going to scale these right up like that. Maybe like that. So at least one of them can fit within the UV tile. Pack again. All right, so it's only been able to fit one island and it's scaled that up because max scale is set to full. So let's try this. Let's set maximum scale to off again and pack again. And again, only one island fits and this time it hasn't been scaled up because we've turned off max scaling. So this time, let's set the minimum scaling to full. And this is gonna authorize Rhizom to scale the islands down if they don't fit. So let's pack again. And there we go. All three islands have kept the average texel density and have been allowed to scale down to fit the UV tile. So using the defaults of full and full is the simplest way because it allows Rhizom UV to both scale islands up or down for the best possible pack. The only limitation is that you don't have control over the texel density of the islands, which is determined by Rhizom UV. If you need to control the texel density, you'd use the same workflow as we saw before with TD and both min and max set to off. And with those settings, let's try it once more. So we'll select all three islands, hold down tab, scale them up quite dramatically, and just move them outside the UV tile. Select the top one, and we'll pick the texel density and pack. And as expected, because scale optimization is off, only one island gets packed because that's all that fits at that texel density. Now, one way to fix this would be to increase the map resolution. So let's double that and pack again. Ah, see, now because we've doubled the resolution of the tile, all the islands can fit at the chosen texel density. Let's undo. And the map res is now back to 2048. So if you don't want to increase the map res, but you do want to have some control over how the islands are packed, you can use overflow. And the overflow option is down here in the UV tile tab. Now, like distribute, the overflow option is going to be moved up to the packing properties panel in a future version. But for now, we'll use it down here. And we're going to choose top and hit pack. So, one of the islands fits, and because we've chosen top as the overflow, all of the islands that don't fit on the UV tile are stacked on top of that island. The other option is top and right. Let's pack again. And now we have an island packed on top and an island packed to the right. Okay, so finally, let's just hit Y to show all of the islands. We'll set initial scale to average, and scale optimization to full and full. And overflow to off and pack. Okay, so now let's select this top island and up here to the right of texel density is a scaling factor. By default, it's at one. Let's choose times two. And pack again. Ah, so there's the island down here. And now that island has two times the texel density of the other islands. All right, so I think that's enough for this tutorial. Now you should have a reasonable understanding of what's happening in the initial scale options and also scale optimization range, as well as distribute and overflow.
So once again, this is John Dickinson for Rhizome Lab. I'll see you in the next tutorial.